How are we going, folks? Guess where we're heading? Out to the orchard to see my dire trees, my little peach and nectarine tree that got copped by aphids, getting destroyed. You know, because I spent too much time focusing on pest control rather than the health of the soil and the plant. <laughs> now, the fact is, folks, that I care so much, I care a lot about the health of the soil and our trees and the plant life that comes above it, and it's my focus to be able to look after them that way. But the truth is, there's only one little me. Yeah, the family gets involved a little bit, but nowhere near as much as I need them to because they've all got their own little lives and careers to look after as well. And this is my little career and hobby, I suppose. Love my orchard. Now these trees here, the peach and nectarine trees got slammed, they got hammered by aphids. And I sprayed them about five or six days ago, thereabouts, I'm not sure exactly how many days ago. And we put a tree band. Now, we have focused on the soil. Let me start back a couple of years so you guys get a better picture of what's going on here. These trees are into the third spring. This is the third spring they're growing. Some trees have gone gangbusters, others are struggling, others have died. As far as death rate out of the 200, about 10 or 15 trees I've lost due to rabbits, bad weather, soil conditions wasn't quite right for them, or any of the, the above that's caused them to die back. But as far as the preparation's concerned, I trenched here and I dug a big, big square hole here and I used my, um, my uh, rotary hoe. So I dug down about 600, it was a metre by a metre, loosened up all the soil, I shoveled in there, you know, bags worth of compost, organic matter, I put in literally shovels of black grit in there and, and uh, manure actually, it was, a, it was a, actually no it wasn't manure, it was a bit of mushroom, I actually got some mushroom in. The bash that I got in was really good and we did spread it over the top here. Now we did put also I got in and there's some moss left over there. This is the old age bark. If you're going to use bark in your garden, if it's a feature, fine. Get some new stuff, fresh stuff and all that sort of stuff that you want for a feature. But if you're using it to build the microbial activity in your soil, microbiota in the earth and part of the soil covering as a bed, that is, you need to get the age stuff. You can't get the fresh stuff. It sucks the living daylights out of the nitrogen in the, in the soil, dehydrates the soil as well. And that's what I added into these beds here. Then I turned it all in and then I planted on top and then I top dressed it with bark again so we've had this that was the only time I fed them that way in that sort of intensity then the year after that all I've done is top dress it with a little bit of black grit and compost not a lot of compost now this year I'm using superfood and black grit as well and you can see the grass coverings come over the top now yes they're going to compete they're going to suck the living daylights out of the nutrients this the weeds and the grass that run across here but you know if you if you add back into the soil enough, you should be able to give enough energy back into the tree by, because at the end of the day, they've got a bigger root system and they all integrate. So you can't stop the grass. This is a part that, look, correct me if I'm wrong, right? The garden beds over time, we're gonna grow this wide. So as the trees grow out their canopies, they're gonna reach out here somewhere. And what I'm talking about is the root system as well. So this garden bed will be top dressed with mulch and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shave all this down. We've done it over there, but we haven't gone back to it because it's been bloody raining. So we haven't been able to do all that top dressing as we want to, because it's been too wet under the foot. But we are gonna go and hit it hard, again with a brush cutter, and then top dress it with our compost and mulch and black grit and super food as we've done here already but we're going to bring it out wider now the grass will grow back but we're composting a larger area and even if we didn't dig, dig all this out or try and get rid of it the roots are still going to grow out to here so whether you've created a wide garden bed or you've got a narrow garden bed around your place because you've got no space you can't just feed around the base of the root uh, the, the trunk that is not where the main feeding feeder roots are. They actually do spread out. They actually anchor themselves out further there. And you've got the microfiber roots that are networking with all mycelium and all the fungi and all the other uh, microbes in the soil. So you need to feed a larger area. So even if you've got lawn in your place and it's only one tree in the middle, don't just feed a 30 centimeter base. This isn't the topic, I've just gone off in a random area again. That's what happens with me. So don't feed in a small area like that. Feed out further, get it out there so you can actually get the tree feeding well. Now we came back here. So that's the story about the trees. And you can see, look, I've pruned them all. And I don't mind that because, you know, they're young trees, I want them to grow. I'll cut them back and they'll just react to that and start growing bigger again, but I'm going to get them to open up. I've got plenty of time and even if I lose a year on one tree because I didn't cut it back early enough, 
that's me. I don't mind that. But if you're pedantic about it, get onto it, get it done right, and make sure you get onto it at the right season so the tree grows and reacts when you want it to. But most of my trees are doing well, really, really well. I mean, the, most of the, the pears have just got a natural upright growth habit in them. So they're the ones that are gonna cut back really hard and get them to react uh, to open up. Back to the topic, aphids infesting our tree. And we put a tree band around it. We have fed it, we've worked on the soil, life and all that, but the infestation's here and the ants bring them up. Now we did spray it and it's had the flowers on. As you can see, it's got flowers on it. I said in my last video that I did this, that I'm gonna risk spraying this tree even while it's in full flower stage with an eco base, you know, insecticide. You can make your own, use your most natural products you got in your kitchen pantry. Pick your favorite, you know, uh, remedies that actually work in controlling pests. You can even use dishwashing liquid with an earth friendly type that will actually, you know, dry out the insects on there as well. But what I did is just use the oil and what I've got here is a tree guard or tree band around it. Now that's the tape with the glue on top of it or the paste. And if I'm not mistaken, I haven't got my glasses with me. I dropped them somewhere as usual. They must be all ants. Ants and the aphids as well. Look at that. They've all been caught up in it. And if you have a close look, whether there are aphids on here or not, and I can assure you there will be some there, but the fact there are no ants on here, the damaging effects of the aphids on the tree are far less is far less, I should say, than when having the ants on there carrying them around. But look, down here, you want to see ants? They're still here. They haven't gone away. They're just trying to work out another way to get back up here. But this stuff here doesn't stop being sticky. It's still sticky. So I reckon they're nesting in here. No, they're not, that's closed off. But, oh, look, 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 this is it. We've just uncovered the holes. This is where they're nesting, in here. Let me just dig around a bit. Anyway, we're not here to look at ants. We're here to look at the aphids on this tree. Have a look, they're still on there. All right, the ants aren't carrying them around everywhere. And they're still alive, they're still moving around. I haven't got my glasses, but I can tell they're still alive. So what we're gonna do is actually give it another spray because the flowers are still on there, you know. Like I said, I'm gonna sacrifice and maybe lose the flowers or the fruit. I don't think it's gonna hold any of these. If it does hold any, I'll be surprised. But I'm gonna get rid of these aphids before they do any more damage to this tree because I don't want it to go backwards. I need this to grow and become a stronger tree. And again, we'll get into the stage of spraying this tree every month on the dot from the beginning of autumn to get control of it. Yep, this is my easy hand sprayer, folks. Just adjusting it. I want to get a bit more of a stream going. Right, the best way to control your trees or spray your plants. What I mean by that is you can put an upward spray like that. See that? I can get onto the underside. That's important when you've got lace bug, which lives or mites that live on the underside of your leaves, like on azaleas, camellias, rhododendrons. If you're spraying the tree from on top, like this, it's dripping on the leaves and it falls down to the top of the next leaf. It never gets to the underside. You need to spray the underside of the leaves when they're infested with sucking insects like mites and lace bug. So get yourself an easy hand sprayer or find a sprayer that's got a swivel nozzle on it and make it work for you because don't waste your time spraying your plants and missing where all the action is. All right, we've sprayed this, we've drenched it. I might have to repeat it again in about five, seven days. And that's what you've got to do with your trees as well. So, and build, you know, the organic matter, the life in the soil, build the immune system in the tree, toughen it up, get it healthier again, or get it healthier even more. So it's going to need more than one spray. All right, if you just tuned in, Vasily's spraying his trees while the flowers are on there. He's lost his mind. So if you're looking for a wonderful product like this, or if you just want to say happy birthday, you're welcome to. Guess what? <laughs> yeah, look at me, I'm announcing my own birthday. The online team folks are doing a little free giveaway. I can't remember what it is, but there is a major sale going on there, folks. 30 to 70% off everything online, or well, almost everything online, folks. Plus, I think if you walk into the store in Coburg there, today, being the celebration day, celebration day, you'll get a little gift as well for every purchase you do there. Check it all out at VasiliesGarden.com. Everything you need. Real people, real gardens, real food. That's who we are. For me, Vasily Maresi.